Okay, now we are checking out hip tension and touch and tone. So basically you're gonna be feeling the six major groups that we talked about with um, hip flexion, hip extension, hip abduction, hip adduction, hip rotation, internal and external rotation. So we'll go through those major muscle groups and then there's gonna be three specific muscles that I really want you to pay attention to. When, you're, when we're going through each of these muscle groups, I want you to use the little chart, and I have these muscle groups on the chart. So you're going to look at pain, light pressure and deep pressure, checking out if you have any scar tissue, restricted movement, uh, so you would have done that in the last video, sensation, so how does it feel, any referred symptoms, and then muscle tension and muscle volume. So remember, muscle tension is basically how that muscle feels when you touch. Does it feel really, really tight and ropey? Does it feel flabby and soft? Does it have good tension, which is halfway in between? And then also muscle volume. So that's that example of the bicep where you have a good, <laughs> good volume. So volume means more or less, right? It's how much how much of a muscle we have. So um, low volume would be a, like a skinny, thin, um, thin muscle. And then high volume, big volume would be thick. Okay. So I know I'm not using a lot of medical terms here, but I hope that that uh, connects with you and makes sense. And then your strength and range of motion we did in the other one. So let's first start off. I have... Ha! An example here, I have a skeleton. You know I love hands-on teaching. So basically hip flexion, these are the muscles at the front, at the front of your pelvis, okay? And this Play-Doh represents just one little baby muscle here. So you're going to, these are the muscles at the front. So you find, here's your pelvis, you find that, uh, anterior is called the ASIS. You find that that bone, that kind of uh, pokey bone out there at the front. It would be, as you're looking at the pelvis, it would be this bone here. So the pelvis is here and we're feeling this bone. And then you're gonna come just inside. If you see, I have my knees bent because that's more likely to be a position that your hip flexor muscles are relaxed in, okay? So you're gonna kind of go in and you're feeling. The biggest thing, I don't, you know, in terms of the muscle volume and the muscle tone, you know, if you feel anything, fine. If you don't, fine. But the biggest things that I'm really want you, wanting you to pay attention to are pain. So feeling, feel that bone drop inside. So are you feeling pain and you're above your hip joint right now? but then actually going into that hip joint and then even down into that thigh. Let me show you a little bit here. So here you are above the hip bone and then go down into that thigh. And so these are your hip flexor muscles. Okay, now we have hip extensor muscles, which is ha your bottom and the back of your legs. And on the skeleton, we would turn the skeleton around and then these muscles would be on the back side there. So they're up in the butt and then they come down and some of them attach on the hip here, some attach on the leg, and then the back of your thigh are also your hip extensors, your hamstrings, okay? So, feeling these, I would say, again, this is really going to depend on your mobility, but kind of getting into a sideline position and you feel the top part of your pelvis here and then just kind of dropping down and feeling in your bottom. Here's your sit bone. So feeling from, from that sit bone up and kind of going inwards towards your sacrum, which is this, and then outwards, okay? 
So how does that feel? You can also feel the back of your thigh. Do you have any tension, pain, uh, and um, you know, restricted mobility, referred symptoms, all of those check off things. So now we have the hip extensors. Then we're going to do hip abductors. So that's the motion when we come out, okay? Away from the body. And these are the muscles kind of on the outside of the thigh, if you can see that. So that's the pelvis, the outside of the thigh and the hips. So I think this is a good, a good position to be in. So find those landmarks again, the pelvic bone at the front, and then just kind of drop behind and you're feeling this whole area. Okay, how does it feel? And you actually have your, it's called your greater trochanter, it's your hip, your hip bone there. And so you can feel, if you kind of rotate your hip in and out, you can feel that bone rotating. If you bring abduction or adduction and then rotation, you can feel that, especially if you rotate internal. So how does it feel? Do you feel any areas of tension, tightness, pain, pain to light pressure, to pain to deep pressure? The next one, you're going to feel something. Most people will probably feel something with that, but this next one is checking your hip adductors. So that's your inner thigh. These are the muscles that attach, they attach there onto your pelvis and your leg. Okay, and they're the ones that bring your legs in. Especially if you have overactive pelvic floor muscles, these muscles will have tension. Uh, but even if you don't have overactive pelvic floor muscles, most people, I would say, have tension in these muscles. You need to get in a position where your leg is relaxed and comfortable. So for me, it's this position. But you kind of experiment with your body and see what works best. So I would say actually starting down here at the knee and just gently, I'm on my inner thigh here. So I'm just gently, and I'm already even with just a little gentle pressure, I'm already feeling tension. Woo! And you go all the way up to your groin crease there, okay? And you'll actually feel that adductor tendon there in your groin. Um, and then you can go deeper if it feels like something that you want to try. If you're having pain and a lot of tension with just light palpation, I probably wouldn't go too deep, especially at the beginning. But this, again, gives you a clue as to what's happening in your body, where you're holding the tension. So if just doing this is sore and sensitive, uh, that's a warning sign really that these muscles maybe need to be stretched, they need to be strengthened, maybe they need to be massaged, maybe we need a foam roller or a ball. That's going to be in one of the interventions down the road in our next section. Okay, and then you do it on the opposite side. So we've done flexion, extension, adduction, and abduction. Now we're going to do rotation. Okay, so now let's check out the hip external rotators. And so these are going to be more of those muscles on the back side. They're deep. Um, some, you know, and the beautiful thing about our bodies is that there isn't just one muscle that does any one function. There's multiple muscles that help. And so if one muscle is impaired or injured, then there's usually some other muscles that can help uh, make up for that muscle, which is a beautiful design. So these are more of your deep hip rotators here at the back. And it's really hard to tell a difference here between what we did with the extensors and with these hip rotators. So just kind of feeling in here. Remember, as soon as I'm done with this, I'm going to show you three key muscles that have problems, but one of them is in here. Okay. Now we're going to do hip internal rotation. Um, and actually, let me go back to hip external rotation. You have a very special muscle that I'm going to go over, but it's on the inside of your pelvis called your obturator internus. 
Okay, so we'll go over that in just a minute. And let's first just do the uh, hip regular, the internal rotators. So again, these are more the muscles at the front of your thigh. Your hip adductors also do internal rotations. So feeling uh, the front of the thigh, feeling your inner thighs in a nice relaxed position, palpating and seeing what you feel. So that gives you a good overview. Now, three muscles that I really want you to pay attention to. Piriformis, obturator internus, and your gluteus medius and your gluteus minimus. Okay, so why do I want you to pay attention to those? Because so many people with pelvic floor muscle dysfunction have issues in those muscles. And I'm not even I, I'm not even talking about the hip adductors. So we already talked about those. Most everyone has some issues there too. But the, these three muscles, a lot of times people have issues. So the piriformis is a muscle that actually attaches onto the sacrum, and it kind of goes across your butt to attach to that hip there. Okay, so it's kind of like a line, almost going sideways, not quite. And so to, to find that, literally, you're going into your butt. And if you, if you can find that hip bone there, that's very pointy, and then you find your sacrum and you kind of run a line. And if you can't find it, that's okay. Just kind of work up and down throughout your butt like that, kind of going up and down. And chances are, if you go deep enough and hard enough, you're going to find this piriformis. And um, a lot of people have dysfunction in it. Okay? So piriformis. Then we're going to talk about obturator internus. So this is a very close friend of your pelvic floor muscles because literally part of this muscle lives inside the pelvis. And what else lives inside the pelvis? Your pelvic floor muscles. So they actually share attachments. I know this may not be a fantastic view, but here from below, like here's that obturator internus, your pelvic floor, Let's see if I can do this with my Play-Doh. Your pelvic floor would be here, kind of inside, and there's your obturator internus. So they actually, they have a little line where one of them comes to one side of the line and the other comes to the other side of the line and they share that line, okay? So that's one reason why the obturator internus is so important and so many uh, people have issues with it that have some kind of pelvic floor dysfunction. It's hard to get to. It's deep inside the pelvis. So there's two ways you can get to it. One is externally, which I'm gonna show you here. And the other way is internally. But it's really, really hard to find on yourself. And this is where using a wand under the direction of a pelvic floor physical therapist could be very helpful. So here's the pelvis. That's the vaginal opening. Okay, so there's the vaginal opening. And what you would do to kind of find that obturator internus is that you would insert that finger into the vaginal canal and then you're, so you're going pretty deep and then you're hooking it to be able to touch. So you're going inside and then you're hooking it to be able to touch that obturator internus inside. And so this is, this is where you really would like to have somebody that is a skilled pelvic floor physical therapist, occupational therapist that has advanced training to help find this obturator internus muscle and help to identify what's going on with it. So I don't expect you to do this internal part. However, the external part, um, it's still hard, but it's something that you can try. Okay. So with my pelvis here, what you actually do is when you're in side line, so we're going to lie down and you find that sit bone, remember our sit bones rocking back and forth, and then you're going to take that hand and scoop it. And so you're trying to scoop it underneath that sit bone, okay, that pelvis, you're going inside. So here's the skeleton and 
you're scooping inside and trying to touch the inside of the pelvis. I know this is really tricky uh, and very, very difficult to do yourself, but I'll just demonstrate it so you have a concept of that this exists and it's a possibility. If you're having hip pain or if you're having pelvic floor dysfunction and you've hit a roadblock, the obturator internus could be your answer. Okay, so you're finding, let me move here so you can see my bottom a little bit better. So finding the sit bone and then you're scooping inside. Like I really am not even finding my own. Like you have to have some really good, strong fingers, a strong arm to be able to get under that sit bone and scoop up. Now, just because you can't necessarily touch it in this position, uh, in the self uh, self release techniques and the interventions that we're going to do in the next section, I am going to teach you a way to uh, do an obturator internus release on your own. Okay, so we did piriformis, um, we did obturator internus, and now we're going to do gluteus medius and minimus. And so these are the muscles that live on the outside of the pelvis kind of on the side of the hip there. And so when you think of glutes, a lot of times people will think of that gluteus maximus. So that's that big juicy butt muscle, okay? These are the side hip muscles. And they're very, very important to help with uh, hip motion, but also hip stability. So let me show you this. If you have uh, weakness, it's going to be difficult for you to stabilize that pelvis. Let me move this up just a bit. So you're standing and it's going to be, so you're, you're standing and a lot of times people will kind of go out like that, right? So their muscles don't have the strength uh, to stabilize that hip. So they're kind of, whoo. These, um, especially uh, as, we, as we age, these muscles really, really need time and attention to build the muscles, to keep the muscle strength, uh, and also flexibility. So to check these muscles out, I'll show you on my little skeleton here, but you're trying to go in and you're trying to find that hip bone on the outside and you're going above it you're going below it and you're going around it, okay? To see if you feel any tightness. And if you go deep enough, so you're really working in there. So I found my, my greater trochanter, that's my bone on the outside. Although I do have quite a bit of layer in between my fingers and my bone, I'm not touching, like here, you can touch straight on the bone, right on that pelvis right here, or most people can get through the layers and be able to touch straight there. This has, this has so many muscles and so much tissue here that it's really difficult to get straight on the bone, but you can get all those muscles around it. And so feeling in here, whoo, and I definitely have some dysfunction here. So I can feel really deep, I'm going, I am going pretty deep here with my finger um, and it hurts. <laughs> so that's a sign that there's some muscle dysfunction and that we need to address it. Okay, I know that was a lot to take in. Drop any questions you have below and I'll do my best to answer them. But ultimately, if you're having hip dysfunction, I recommend that you see a physical therapist. Um, even if you don't have a pelvic floor physical therapist near you, if you're having hip dysfunction, a regular physical therapist can also do wonderful things to help you. And they may even be able to connect you with the pelvic floor PT. Okay, thank you friends. See you next time, bye.